This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lake Fenton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Vincent Slocum. I'm so pleased to be joining all of you this morning. Whether you're a longtime member of Lake Fenton United Methodist Church or you're joining us relatively recently on, on our online streams, if you're joining us on Facebook this morning, then I invite you to share your name. Greet one another with a sign of God's peace in the comment stream, either, either to the bottom or to the side of your screen. Even if we can't be together in person, let us feel together in spirit. And if you're new to our congregation, we would love the opportunity to know that you are here and to greet you as a welcome visitor to our congregation. And, and you know, even if you'd rather just anonymously audit the sermon quietly from home, then, then that's okay too, right? God loves you and so do we. We are so pleased that you are joining us in worship this morning. Wherever you are coming from and however you came to be here, you are welcome. Now this morning we continue our sermon series, Electric Evangelism. For the past couple of weeks we've been sharing lessons and stories from the lives, from the life and ministry of the Apostle John, who spoke who preached a gospel of life and love and joy in a time of great turmoil and challenge for the church. He was an apostle that, that met darkness and difficulty with joy and enthusiasm and preached the gospel, the good news of Jesus, widely. John has a great number of lessons to teach us for, for today's day and age as we've been learning, and we're going to continue that series this week. Now, to help us begin our worship, I am so pleased to once again invite June Wesh to share a hymn with us. This morning, June will be sharing with us, Take Time to Be Holy. For those of you who are listening in at home, it's 395 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Thank you once again, June, for sharing your music with us. Lake Fenton, at this time, I would like to invite all of you to join me now in sharing one of the most important creeds in, in all of the church, one of the ways in which we stay united with one another through our beliefs is, is through the recitation of the words of the Apostles' Creed, which I invite all of you from home to join me now in saying... The words will appear on your screen in just a moment. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lake Fenton, it's been another long week. It seems hot on the heels of one disaster in Hurricane Laura, which just recently devastated the Gulf Coast. We are now watching communities all over Northern California and Oregon devastated by by wildfire and raging infernos that are destroying communities all over the West Coast. All of this is now happening as families all over the nation are wrestling with the difficult decision of how and when for their children to go back to in-person school and education or whether or not to keep them home and learning online Teachers all over the country are scrambling to put together lesson plans and make learning happen for our students through a wide variety of different means, right? Many of them have students who are entirely online in addition to students who are in the classroom. Many of them were not specifically trained for this kind of situation and they are moving heaven and earth to still make learning happen for our students. Blake Fenton, it is a difficult time and we are all doing a lot of heavy lifting. And so this morning, whatever heavy lifting you have been doing, whatever cares and worries, whatever burdens you have been carrying with you all this week, I invite you to let those burdens drop at your feet. Lay them down at the feet of God. Loosen your shoulders, let the tension roll out of it. Breathe in the peace of God. Exhale the weight and burdens of this world. Breathe in God's Holy Spirit and exhale fear and doubt. Keep breathing as you join with me now in a moment of prayer. Gracious and loving God, this morning we come to you in a difficult time. Lord, this morning we remember all those families, all those individuals who are watching their homes, their lives, their valuables go up in flames. Lord, this morning we remember all those whose communities have been rocked by the terrible wildfires happening all over in California and Oregon. Lord, we ask we be with all of those relief workers who are fighting day in and day out to control the devastation caused by these wildfires. Lord, this morning, we cannot help but worry at the ways in which we seem to be at war with this, your great creation. And so, Lord, this morning, we invite you to enter our hearts. Help us to remember the ways that we are called to be faithful stewards of creation. Lord, as we see the effects of unchecked climate change and the devastation that it that it brings. Lord, we ask that you strengthen and empower us to be better stewards of your creation. Lord, we ask that you be on the hearts and minds of all those who are watching this devastation, that their generosity may pour forth, that aid and comfort may be swift and abundant in coming to communities who need it most at this time. Lord, also this morning, we ask that you be with all of the students, all of the educators, all of the administrators in our schools who are trying desperately to make learning happen for all of our nation's young people in the midst of trying and difficult times. They are being innovative. They are being creative. They are persevering, they are enduring. And Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you for the ways that you are with them and we ask that you continue to remain with them. Lord, we ask all these things in the words that your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lake Fenton, this morning, as we continue to follow news of the wildfires that are so devastating communities across the West Coast, this morning I'd like to share some good news with all of you. You see, for those of you who joined us in worship a few weeks ago, you'll recall that, that during our tithes and offerings, we encouraged everyone to make contributions to UMCOR the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Now, UMCOR re provides relief to disaster-struck communities all over the nation and world. Every single year, UMCOR is instrumental in supporting the on-the-ground work of churches and nonprofits in, in disaster-battered communities and and during in-person outdoor worship that same week, we took up a loose change offering to, to support UMCOR's disaster relief efforts. This morning, as, as we watch the devastation wrought by, by these recent wildfires, I am so pleased to let all of you know that thanks to the efforts of Lake Fenton United Methodist Church members in that week when we were raising funds for UMCOR, we raised over 300 dollars to support the, the aid relief work of UMCOR. And UMCOR is that much closer to now meeting its goals for supporting communities, right? That is money that will go directly into communities, not only in Texas, not only those communities that have been affected by Hurricane Laura, but also communities who are now in California, Oregon, and Washington that are now being affected by these terrible blazes. Lake Fenton, on the bottom of your screen, you will see once again the address to, the, to Lake Fenton United Methodist Church where you can mail in your tithes and offerings as well as a link online. If you're joining us during our online worship service and you'd like to give by credit card, below you will see a link to our PayPal account where you can do so. Lake Fenton, thanks to your generosity, communities all over the country who are being affected by disasters now ha are that much closer to having the support that they need. And it is only thanks to the generosity of Lake Fenton United Methodist members like yourselves. Lake Fenton, thank you for all of the ways that you have and continue to give. And now, Lake Fenton, this morning, I am so pleased to welcome Margaret Danks, who will be sharing our scripture reading this morning from, from the Gospel of John. Listen to hear God speaking to you through Margaret's voice in this morning's scripture reading as, as we prepare to begin our lesson for this morning. Scripture for this morning is from the Gospel of John, first chapter, verses one through five. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the first jobs that I ever worked out of high school was at a movie the was as a movie theater usher at at Rave Cinemas on Corona Road in Flint. Now, mind you, this was back before Rave Cinemas was Rave Cinemas, and and it was in fact Showcase Cinemas Flint West. Right? It was also before Trillium and Grand Blank was built. Back when Showcase Cinemas Flint West was one of the nicest theaters in in the entire county. Not. I've always been something of a night owl, but back then I was especially bad in my late teens and through most of my 20s. It was not uncommon 
for me to stay up until four or five o'clock in the morning and sleep well past noon or one o'clock in the afternoon, right? Now this, coupled with the fact that I'm an avid movie buff, really made the movie theater a perfect job for me with the obvious exception being that, that it paid minimum wage. <laughs> now, make no mistake, there is absolutely nothing glamorous about working as a movie theater usher. You see, as an usher, I was responsible for cleaning the theaters after each show, sweeping and mopping the lobby, tearing tickets and, and guiding patrons to their movies and, and addressing disruptions in the theaters, right? Someone threw up in the men's room. Hey, Vince, grab some sawdust and a mop. What? There's a brute frat boy hopped up on steroids and causing a commotion in Theater 12. Let's ask Vince to go in there and, and ask him nicely to, to quiet down. <laughs> in my time as an usher, I cleaned up liquor bottles, diapers, cups of chewing tobacco, spit, sunflower seed shells that had been chewed up and spit out onto the floor, and a whole slew of other disgusting things that, that really are best left unmentioned in, in a Sunday worship service. Being an usher was gross, and underpaid work that, that meant working every single holiday and, and most of the weekends. However, it also meant free movie tickets and, and popcorn. It meant getting to see the new movies before they were released. And, and it meant getting to pop into theaters on my downtime and, and watching my favorite scenes of, of the new Lord of the Rings movie. The longest shifts were always the closing shifts. You see, it was, an close, it was the closing usher's responsibility to, to clear the auditoriums out and rope them off after the last show got out. Now, on a Friday or Saturday evening in the summer when there were still midnight shows going, this meant working until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, depending on how long the last movie of the night lasted. Now, one summer night, as I was closing out the auditoriums at Showcase, I had an encounter with one of the theater's after-hours cleaners that, that I don't think I'll ever forget. As you, one night, as I was roping off the theaters at the end of the night, I felt a stinging sense of inner anguish and pain as I passed by one of the after-hours cleaners. I couldn't really describe it. And, at first, I really didn't give it all that much thought and, and just went right back to working. However, later that night, I ended up running into that cleaner again, and, and out of nowhere, he started talking, striking up a conversation with me. As it turned out, he was in the middle of a long and contentious custody battle with his ex-wife, and he was worried about how it was affecting his relationship with his young kids. Then he shared with me how his previous church had rejected he and his new fiance over the divorce and, and how the pastor at that church refused to allow he and his fiance to take part in the church's communion for their participation in what he called an unbiblical union. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, that one broke me. I had never heard something that had so morally and spiritually repelled me in all my life. As we talked, I told him all about how I had grown up, the child of divorced parents, and, and had spent most of my childhood going back and forth between parents' households every, every other weekend. I, I told him that while this had certainly strained relationships with me and my parents at times, it, it had also proved to be an unexpected blessing for me, as without the divorce, I never would have met my stepfather, Gary, who, who is one of the best and finest men that I have ever known in my entire life. Without the divorce, I never would have had the privilege of having not one, but two fathers supporting me from the pews as I preached my very first sermon. I also got more Christmas and birthday presents, so, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> as we kept talking, I could see that he was starting to tear up when Suddenly, 
the Apostle John's words from this morning's reading popped into my head, and, and so I shared them with him, right? The light shines within the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Oh, man, I was so impressed with myself in that moment, right? Like, I knew the verse number and everything, Right? I even pulled one of those Well, John chapter 1, verse 5 says, right? I had just scriptured someone. You could have given me every microphone in all of creation and I would have dropped them all right there in the hallway like boom. All my life, I'd heard folks casually quote or drop lines from scripture, but this was the first time that I'd ever been able to do it for myself. <sighs> for the past few weeks, we've been exploring key terms in the writings of John the Apostle. Two weeks ago, we talked about John's concept of love, and, and last week we talked about joy. This week, we hear yet another key concept for John, right? The concept of light. Now, this is not just any light, mind you, but the light, right? The light that was from the beginning, the light that was made manifest in those first spoken words of God's creative eruption in the opening lines of Genesis. In that moment when God first spoke the words, let there be light. The light which is itself life and Truth for all creation, the light which John in his later writings makes clear is nothing less than God himself. Now, often we tend to think of light and dark as, as being opposed to one another. Where there is light, there is no darkness, and where there is darkness, there is no light, right? Light, good. Darkness, bad. Right? As believers, we tend to think of life, and particularly the life of faith, as a kind of spiritual constant battle between opposing forces, right and wrong, good and evil, light and darkness, order and chaos, justice and injustice. Often we approach our spirituality in the same way, we picture our soul as a kind of cosmic battlefield in which spiritual forces wage war, right? On the one hand, you've got God and goodness and salvation. And, and on the other hand, you've got the devil and temptation and damnation. But, but that's not exactly what we hear. In today's reading, you see, we don't hear in today's reading how the light drowned out or overcame the darkness, but rather how the light shines within the darkness. In today's reading, we hear about the light's coexistence with the darkness rather than its victory over it. You see, John saw that light become flesh in the body of Christ. And in so doing, John saw that light become hope for all nations and people. That light came to us in a time of great darkness for God's people. And John preached the gospel of that light in an age in which that darkness seemed to be growing and not going away. The hope that that light brought to the world was not an end to the darkness, but rather the courage to endure when the darkness is all around us, when it seems to be all that we can see. It was a steadfast promise that that light would never fade. It would endure with us always until that final day of its triumph in which all the broken and failing hearts of this world would be made whole and the whole of God's creation would be bathed in the full and magnificent glory of its light. 
Now, I couldn't have told you even a fraction of this when I first quoted the opening lines of John's gospel all those years ago. All I knew was that here was a man who was afraid, who was hurting deeply, and these were the only words of Scripture that I could think to offer which might be of any kind of help to him. After we talked, he asked if I could pray with him, and and so I did, and we prayed together there in the hallways of of Showcase Cinema. It was the first time that I had ever used Scripture, at least the first time that I could recall, that I had used Scripture and prayer directly and of my own intention to provide help and comfort to someone in a time of need. Now, over the years, as I've wrestled with my call to the ministry, I've gone back to this moment time and again. In fact, during my candidacy for the ministry, when I was asked to write a statement on one of the most powerful religious experiences of my life, I chose to write about this exact moment. However, it's only now. And it's only through the lessons of the Apostle John that that I finally think I'm beginning to understand the lesson of that moment. You see, the light shines within the darkness, and to acknowledge that, we must, of course, contend with that darkness. To acknowledge this is to admit that we find ourselves within that same darkness. I've preached a number of sermons at this point in my pastoral career. Some of them were pretty good, and and some of them were maybe a little bit less effective than, than I was hoping that they would be. However, one thing that I have learned is that far and away, the most powerful and affecting sermons that I have ever preached, the ones in which I most often hear from folks how moved and grateful they were to hear my sermon, the sermons in which I feel most directly and intimately connected with the presence of God within my own soul are the ones in which I share with the congregation, in which I allow them to share with me in some moment of personal failure, weakness, frailty, or vulnerability. They are the sermons in which I share my failures rather than my successes. I had shared scripture with the cleaner that night at Showcase, and that was certainly a good thing. But more importantly, I had shared him. I had shared with him a moment of pain and hurting from my own life that matched the cleaner's own pain, and I used that pain as a lamplight through which to guide him into an actual experience with that scripture. For you see, sometimes bringing the light of hope into the lives of broken and hurting souls of this world means meeting them within the darkness, and more often than not, The only way for us to meet them in the darkness is to look deeply and honestly within ourselves and recognize the many ways in which we are already there. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, Lord, we thank you for your light which shines in the darkness. We thank you for bringing us into those moments of darkness where we may partake in in your light which shines there. Lord, this morning we ask that you fill our hearts and help make for us beacons within that darkness, guiding the hurting and broken souls of this community to your light, to your love, your hope, and your salvation, Lord. Amen. Lake Fenton, one of the best things about the connectionalism that comes from being part of a larger denomination like the United Methodist Church is the ways that in difficult times we as congregations can support and learn from one another. 
So this morning, I am so pleased to introduce very special guests who are going to help us close out our worship in song this morning. You see, one of the things that I've so missed in this time of isolation and pandemic is, is the ability to sing hymns together in person. It's, it's the congregation as a whole singing and, and hearing choirs share in, in the singing of hymns. Now, we have been so blessed here at Lake Fenton United Methodist to enjoy the beautiful music of so many incredibly gifted and talented soloists and even an ensemble or two, but, but we have not been able to enjoy, even in our in-person worship, we have not been able to safely enjoy singing together as a group. The kind of jubilation and, and joy that comes from singing in a choir or in a group setting. Now, this morning, I am so Pleased, our friends at Court Street United Methodist have found a way to use Zoom so that members of their chancel choir, as well as musicians from their congregation, can come together and make choir, make ensemble music, choir music happen in a way that is safe and, and in a way that, that prevents choir members from contaminating one another in the congregation. And so this morning, I am so pleased to welcome the chancel choir from Court Street United Methodist Church, who will be helping us to close out our worship in song. This morning, the chancel choir will be singing, Forth in Thy Name, O Lord. It's number 438 in the hymnal for those of you who would like to follow along and sing at home. Lake Fenton, this morning I just have one quick announcement before we close out our worship and I offer a word of blessing. I would like to remind everyone, I know I made the announcement last week, but I'd like to remind everyone that the United Methodist Women will be resuming its meeting starting this Wednesday, September 16th at noon. The meeting will be here. It will be held outdoors uh, as long as weather permits us to be outdoors. However, in the event of rain or extreme temperatures, the meeting will be moved inside to our lake room where everyone will be safely social distance. Masks are required. However, we do ask that, that folks bring a lawn chair if you're planning to join us. And in case the meeting's outside, bring a lawn chair along with you. And, and of course, this will be a lunch meeting. So bring a sack lunch or, or if you're anything like me, bring some takeout. 
<laughs> with you and, and feel free to, to join in. The United Methodist Women meeting is free and open to any women of the congregation, even if you're new to the congregation. Maybe you've just been joining us online and, and have yet to, to come with us in, in person, or maybe you've only joined us recently at one of our, our recent in-person worship services. Know that you are absolutely welcome at that meeting. It is open and, and inviting to all who would like to attend. So the United Methodist Women does a variety of different uh, ministries here in the congregation, as, as well as providing a source of, of inspiration, devotion, and, and fellowship to the women of our congregation. They also raise funds to support a variety of ministries here at Lake Fenton United Methodist and, and in our community. So please, if you're interested, I encourage you. That date is September 16th. That's a Wednesday at noon. Bring a mask, a lawn chair, and a sack lunch. You are absolutely welcome. And so... Lake Fenton this morning as we close out our worship. I invite all of you to receive this word of blessing. May you always meet one another in the darkness and together help one another find your way to the light which shines there. May the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Lake Fenton United Methodist, I love you. God loves you. Go in peace.